Hello everyone. This is the second episode covering laser component lifecycle. In this episode, I'm going to cover the sequence of each one of the lifecycle event uh, in terms of in what sequence they are being triggered. So I'm going to cover both the uh, server side blazer as well as the web assembly blazer. I'm going to divide this into two categories. The first one is the first time rendering, right? And the second one is after the first time. So the first time rendering is when the page is just loaded uh, or when you navigate to the component, to this page component. Let's first cover the first category uh, with server side blazer. So I have server side blazer uh, default template. Uh, I have all of the events written down and a break breakpoints. Same with the child component. I have all of the events and have the breakpoints for each one of them. And I have the child component uh, used by the parent component. So I'm going to run debug and let's pay attention to uh, in which sequence these events are triggered. Again, this is uh, server side blazer. All right, so the set parameter is async in the parent component is triggered first. And then I'm going to hit continue and initialized second on parameter third. And when I press uh, continue again, now I'm expected to go to the child component instead of carrying on. So I hit F5 and the set parameter is async in the child component is a hit. And secondly, the on initialized is triggered in the child component followed by on parameter set. So if I press continue again, it's actually not going to uh, go to the shoot render or after render. Same with in the parent component, these two events are not triggered. So let's go over here. This is where our breakpoint is currently at. So I'm going to hit continue again. Now uh, we, we're jumping back to the parent component. And uh, again, the same parameters async is rendered and initialize and then so I'll initialize and then press continue again on parameter set. And then actually when I when I come when I click on continue, it's going to jump over here again and then I'll initialize and then parameter set. So why are they rendered uh, twice? These three events are rendered twice. Uh, that's because if you look at the diagram, we look at the diagram, we have the browser and we have the server side. Uh, the first request sent by the user and then the first rendering is, so this is, again, this is server side blazer, okay? Server, server side blazer, the browser sends a request first and then renders for the first time. Including the, the JavaScript uh, for server side blazer and that JavaScript establish a signal R connection and then server side renders the component again. That's why it rendered twice. That's why those three events are called twice. Right? So after this, what will happen if I continue from here? So I jump back to the parent component and cause the on, on after render. Skipping the should render because this is the first time and it has to render. It doesn't make any sense to allow the, the developer to, con to control whether to render the component or not. It has to render the component. And then I continue jumping to the uh, child component, calling the on after render event handler again. If I continue, now the page is rendered. Uh, I want to emphasize that the, the double rendering only happens when the application, when the component is loaded for the very first time. Uh, so if you navigate away from the component and then navigate back, because the signal R channel is already established, so those three events that are caught twice will not be caught twice again. So let's demonstrate that. So let me so let me refresh the page. Right? So you notice that we're on the parent component, three events child component, these three events, going back to the first parent page, these three events, 
and secondly on the child component so we noticed so far uh, these three events are called twice on um, both the parent component and the child component that's because I refresh the page uh, by refreshing the page the signal arc connection is reestablished that's why these three events are being called twice and then we're going to the on after render uh, on parent page parent component and uh, on after render on child component right so if I'm not doing that if I never get away from the uh, from the home component from, from the index component and never never get back to the index component watch what happens now okay these three events and then child component these three events happen again but then those three events are not going to be called a called twice so we're actually moving on to unlock surrender for the parent component and then unlock the render for the child component okay let's summarize so the event sequence that we are experiencing in server-side blazer in the first category which is the first time rendering is that the um, these three events are being called uh, one by one in the parent component and then the same set of events are being called in the same sequence in the child component and then after that the same thing happens again right for the parent and for the child and only after that the parent component after render is called and child component after render is called seeing this any initialization code that you put inside these three methods uh, on server side blazer is going to be called twice so when you're initializing your data you have to really pay attention to where you put your initialization um, there is a on after render async uh, with a parameter that indicates whether it's the first time or not so for server side blazer i recommend that you use that to initialize your data in the on after render depends on whether you are going to use that data to render on the screen or not uh, if yes, then you need to call status, status change method to re-render the page again. Now let's look at the same thing in Blazor Web Assembly because it does not actually trigger the breakpoint. Uh, so you, you can either debug it through the browser, uh, which I have demonstrated in the uh, previous episodes. So today I'm going to actually use console.write. That is similar to the uh, console.log in JavaScript. So you can just do this and then expect to see uh, expect to see the, the log is written in the console window in the developer tool. So I'm just going to do that. All right, let's go to Blazor. Let's go to developer tool. And we can see that uh, it's actually the same sequence, right? Parent component called this three, uh, three events. Child components again. It's the three events, and then parent components call on after render, child component calls on after render. The only difference is that um, the only difference is that the parent component, uh, these three methods are only called once, uh, because this is WebAssembly. Uh, thus, um, the second rendering is no longer needed because there's no signal R channel that is. This is that is established. Now let's moving on to the second category, which means re-render, right? And from the previous episode that we know there are four different uh, cases that would trigger a re-render of the let's use a, a button. I have a button here and uh, I have an event handler here. So this is server side blazer. So I have a breakpoint set up right here and let's run it and see what happens. If I click on the click me button okay, the first event that is called is actually the event handler of this button right and then after that so we are on the parent page the button is only on the parent page parent component so I click on the continue button we're calling the shoot render and then if I click on it again we're calling on the on 
unlock the render and notice that we're still on the parent component and you see that the child component re-rendering is not called if you watched my previous episode that you know the reason why the child component is not re-rendered right so those none of those four conditions satisfies so the child component are not going to be re-rendered all right for the second category which is the re-render category uh, this let's summarize that it actually looks like this right so first you have your parent component and if there's no condition for the child component to render you, what you're gonna see is something like this right you have your parent component should render and then your parent component after render and if there's parameter change or any other condition that triggered re-render of the child component what you're gonna see is something like this you're gonna have your parent component should render and then these three events and then parent component after render and then child component after render. Something that is interesting I want to uh, point out is that should, should render. Okay, so let's do a, um, let's change this to return uh, false. Okay, now let's see what happens. So I'm going to click on the clean the button and then the event handler of the buttons are called first. Going to should render. And then you see that the count is not changed. And uh, so that means the child component is not re-rendered. And the parent component is actually not re-rendered. We did not go, uh, we did not move over here. We didn't see the breakpoint of this on after render and it's, it's called. So it wasn't rendered. So for the, the second category, which is a re-render scenario, uh, the server side and uh, the, the client side blazer, like the web assembly blazer, are exactly the same so I'm not actually going to run the demo again so that's everything I want to cover today and if you like my video please give it a like and subscribe I'll see you in the next episode thank you for watching